Okay, there we go. So welcome to STAT. This is section 3371853. All right. So um, this is our Canvas that I have pulled up. In order to find Canvas, you could start typing in our main school's website, lbcc.edu, and then click up here, Canvas LMS, and you'll log in. And um, your dashboard will probably, you know, look different than mine. But let's see, just moving windows. Let me leave student view here. All right, so your dashboard has a card, for all of your classes, and maybe some other things like if you have um, basic needs, Viking Vault, or whatever. So, you know, we all probably have a different dashboard display. And then this is our class here with the red. Okay. So I already have it pulled open here. And this is our home page. Notice the menu on the left. If you scroll down a bit, you'll see I have embedded this welcome orientation video. And so most of you have probably already watched that. We're going to kind of go over a lot of the same stuff. I'll try and be fast. But so this is our main meeting place. I've got some information about myself and contact info. I am only online this semester. So you might want to put my, my cell phone in your smartphone or make a note of it. Or also my email address. Those are probably going to be the two main ways that you reach out to me. Uh, we have office or student hours, dedicated hours for you guys to ask for help, reach out and just talk to me. Um, they're going to be via Zoom, but just shoot me a text or call me. Let me know you want to go into a Zoom so I'm not just staring at a screen for two and a half hours. <laughs> um, otherwise, you can call, text or email me just anytime, literally 24 seven. If I'm sleeping or unavailable, you know, I just won't respond, but you can don't be surprised if I'm replying at two in the morning, if I'm up or whatever, <laughs> you never know. And I've got some info about myself down there. Uh, back to the homepage. Also in this table is a link to our syllabus. So you can download the syllabus here. And I have some other info here, like all assessments have a universal accommodation of double time. Okay, which doesn't mean not to reach out to Disabled Students Programs and Services Office if you do need an accommodation. But just so you know, I have already programmed it in. I know oftentimes students are scrambling, trying to get information and doctors and appointments and all of that. So it's just already set, ready to go. Um, this is our syllabus. And I've got all the contact info and everything. And notice I really start out congratulating you guys. And that is a very sincere congrats. Because I know I was kind of first generation college student myself. And um, it's a big deal just getting in college. You know, I was a high school dropout. So it was a really big deal for me to start at a community college. Um, you know, oftentimes... We're just given messages in our culture that we don't belong, maybe because of different backgrounds um, or socioeconomic status or a disability or any other, you know, number of things. Like if you're marginalized in any way, um, that could be even more so like your story. So kudos for making it here. You're in college. Um, and, you know, I love when we have a very diverse class, like we have a diverse student population here at Long Beach City College. Um, I also want to let you know that you guys can all be successful in this class. 
And that is not just lip service. You guys can totally, totally pass this class. In fact, I mean, I remember even just last semester, I had several students saying, wow, like I was worried I wasn't going to pass. And now I'm like, asking what can I do to make sure I get an A? Like I never even had an A ever in a math class. So I'm telling you, this class is totally doable. I'm here to actually help you. This is not like some kind of a weeder class. You know, I actually want every single one of you to pass. And I believe you all can pass. Um, if you look at the grade breakdown, okay, 50% of your course, course grade is your homework. So if you only just completed all your homework, you've already got 50% of the points, right? To pass the class, you only need 70%. So that means you're only missing 20% of the points, you know, kind of by accident. If you, you know, even do fairly well on the quizzes, exams, and final. I mean, you're just going to pass by accident. You know what I'm saying? So um, you can all definitely do this. So I want to encourage you to just, you know, if you're already kind of in your head, like, I'm not a math person. I hate math. Um, I signed up, but I'm probably not going to pass this class or telling yourself any of those other things. I really want to encourage you to like, just stop right now and at least be open-minded to the possibility like, hey, Dr. Ward is telling me I can do this. So maybe I can do this at the bare minimum. Okay. Because I'm telling you, you can do this. I'll be reinforcing that all semester, all semester, you know, come to class, do your homework, you're gonna pass. Okay, here's the learning process. I want you guys to read all this like on your own time. Um, what the SLO student learning outcomes are the outcomes of the class, what you will be able to do upon completion of the course, solve problems in probability and, you know, do some descriptive and inferential statistics. And you'll see what all that is. We're making use of an online math learning system called Alex. Okay, no cheating. Um, it's actually kind of hard to cheat in this class, but it's possible, I think, to really cheat somehow in every class. And I I really want to encourage you, if you have cheated in the past or if you're keeping that kind of in your back pocket, like if it gets too hard, I'll just cheat or whatever, um, please don't. You know, when you finally graduate or get your certificate, I want that to be a day where you really feel, you know, your success, your, that you've earned that, right? Education is one of the very few things in life that will never, ever be taken away from you, right? People may come and go in your life, property, belongings. You know, I often think about how my dad's house burned down, which was awful, but, you know, things that we might think are permanent, you know, I mean, sadly, or maybe not, I don't know. It's just the way of life, right? I mean, there's constant change. But once you earn a degree, it is yours till the day you die. No one can ever take that from you. So please make that count. You know, anything that's worthwhile is something that you have to work for. So... I just really hope for you that graduation day will be filled with, you know, like pride that you were able to accomplish it and not that you cheated. And if you've cheated before, make this a whole new day. And from here forward, you know, no more. And if anybody wants help making amends for any past wrongs, I can help um, without getting in trouble. <laughs> um, but there are things we can do.
So um, I still remember, you know, with um, with humility and joy and pride, my my graduation day. It was a beautiful day, and you know, it meant so much to me because, especially my college graduation, it was the hardest one. You know, just all the the poverty issues and my car breaking down and you know the ex boyfriend who had whole kinds all kinds of problems. <laughs> um, so finally making it, you know, it wasn't even the academics that were hard; it was life that was hard. Uh, but I didn't cheat, and when I walked, you know. It was the best feeling in the world. And that's what I really want for all of you guys. And on the flip side, um, if I catch anybody cheating, I'm pretty brutal, you know, because there's just, there's no second chances. There's just no need for anyone ever to try to cheat. So bare minimum. And I have tried to, you know, kind of do the full gamut when I've caught people cheating, you know, zero on an assignment, um, failing a class to trying to get somebody expelled from a college or university. And I've been teaching over 25 years. I feel like I've seen it all, you know. Um, so hopefully none of you will, will try to go down that road. Uh, be nice to everyone and respectful rules of etiquette, etc. Lots of resources posted here. You guys might want to put this phone number for the student tech help 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 desk in your phones. Um, you know, you might think, oh, I could just look it up online. But what if you're having problems accessing online and you need to reach out to them? Right? It's a good number to keep handy. Um, they also have in-person places and email. Again, if anybody needs accommodations, here's a direct link to DSPS, some other stuff. And then the very last page, this is our tentative schedule. I totally recommend that you guys print that out, keep it handy. Um, I also take a picture of all of my classes and I keep it on my phone. So if I'm in a doctor's office, you know, like I know, oh, that's right. That's Labor Day. We don't have class. Or, you know, in my other class on that Tuesday, there's no class, et cetera. So I can schedule a doctor's appointment or whatever. Um, the yellow are our live Zooms. The pink are the holidays for the semester. And, you know, flex days are professional development day. So we have no classes that day. And then notice all of these Sunday due dates, all the due dates, you know, have things that are due at midnight on that day. Okay, so in blue, it's basically homework and then quizzes in that kind of light pink. And then our exam days are in red. Practice exams are over here. And so basically what happens is, you know, during the week we work on stuff. And then at the end of the week, you know, by Sunday at midnight, before we meet again on Monday, the homework is due. So, I mean, I feel like that's pretty standard. So, for example, in week three, right, we meet these two class periods, and we'll be working on chapter two. And then by Sunday, midnight, you will have your homework and quiz for chapter two due. And then the next week, we work on chapter three. Et cetera, et cetera. Um, this first week, there's just a lot of the administrative stuff. And then we're doing this prep objective, it's called. So like preparation, just to review some stuff before we get started. Um, the red, these are, are our exam days. We are not meeting in live Zooms on exam days. We'll be talking about all of this again, of course, but just kind of a heads up. Um, I know a lot of professors have students, you know, 
come to live Zoom and leave their cameras on while they take their exams to make sure they're taking their exams. And this is what I'm saying, you know, no cameras. I'm just giving you guys the whole class period or the whole day, really, including the class period to take your exam. So once you start it, you have three hours in one sitting, but you can use that, you know, three hours anytime during the day. So you can take exam one anytime on what, September 25th. Okay, so we just won't have a live Zoom that day. To give you time to take the exam in case you need to do it during class time. All right. And the final exam will also be on Monday. This is kind of like a just in cases. <laughs> but it'll also be on Monday. All of our exams are on Monday, okay? They're all gonna be in Alex and they'll open up and be ready for you to take whenever you want. And once you start, it'll be timed for three hours, which is, you know, double time programmed in there. It's actually more than that, but you know, I just don't want time to be, a, it shouldn't be an issue. You should feel no stress taking your exams with time at all. Okay, feel free to jump in with any questions you guys too. Just, just reminding you of that. Okay, so the syllabus. Back to our homepage. This is where, right, I have the link for math video lectures like this one, I'll be uploading this at my YouTube channel. So you guys, I recommend you subscribe and then you'll get notified when I add a video. It doesn't happen always right away. Sometimes I don't even get a link to a recording for maybe a day. And then I have to download it and process it and upload it to YouTube, you know, so it might take a little bit. Um, and the question is, is attendance mandatory? I mean, in one sense, yes, because, you know, you ought to be attending class. Are there points or anything else? No. You know, in spirit, you really need to be attending class um, twice a week. You know, you ought to be coming to all the classes just like I did when I was in college. <laughs> so if you click on playlists, there's um, stat one, and you can click on view full playlist. And as you can see, I already have, you know, tons of videos up for all the chapters. So you could actually work ahead even if you wanted. Okay. I'm just going to keep tacking these on to the end because <laughs> that's where they automatically go when I upload a video. Okay. And thanks for asking the question about attendance too. I am actually going to be, uh, you know, ensuring attendance by making sure that you guys have logged into Alex and started doing your homework. That's how I'll count if students are like active, you know. So there's that. Here's the link for Alex and our ebook. So here's our ebook. This is a free textbook. And it's a remix of an OpenStax, Open Educational Resource, OER, if you guys are familiar with that term. Um, OER texts are becoming more and more common because a lot of this material hasn't changed in ages and we're trying to make it more affordable for students to improve access to education. You know, back in my day, we literally spend hundreds of dollars on every single textbook, even though a lot of this has been out for like hundreds of years. <laughs> so it's great now. Um, 
And then for Alex, right, you can click here. It takes you to the Alex website. And again, this is our online math learning system. You can click on sign up as a new student with the class code. And here's the class code for our class. All right, so be careful if you're watching a video for a different class. Each class has a different class code. So you ought to be using the class code that's in your Canvas course shell, okay? So you're gonna copy and paste and confirm. Here you go, 23 fall, stat one, Monday, Wednesday, section 33, 245. And that's me, okay? She'll go ahead through and set up your account. If you already have an account, you can just add this class. And it's going to ask you at some point for an access code. And I recommend that everybody uses this free financial aid access code, which gives you, I'm pretty sure, 14 days. Okay, so the, the reason why they call these financial aid access codes is because sometimes students receive who are receiving financial aid, they don't receive their financial aid until after the start of the semester. You know, and that happened to me. I was on financial aid and it never failed. Like my check, I'd get a paper check and it would show up like a week late. And so I wasn't able to afford to buy any of my textbooks or anything. And so I would be behind every quarter, you know. Um, so now these online systems have these free financial aid access codes to just get you started so you don't have to wait for any money. It gives you free 14 days. And even if you have the money, it's only, only it's the low cost, $39.99, which is not bad. Um, I still recommend, even if you can afford it right away, I recommend you wait and do the free financial aid access code first and just make sure you know, you like the class, everything's going good for you, you know, just take advantage of that free first two weeks, right? The first two weeks of school are often a little crazy. So it's helpful, I think. Okay, we also have this help link here. So there's all kinds of, you know, Alex support, getting started, training, blah, blah, blah. Okay, articles, contact us, blah, blah, blah. So just help stuff, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and log into my Alex account. And I'm going to pull up the student view. So this looks like what you will be seeing. If you want to open a separate window and, you know, work alongside, you can do that all the time during class if you want. So if you want, if you were going ahead and setting up your account, when you first create your account, this is what it takes you to. And so Alex is known for having what's called a computer adaptive system, which figures out topics you know and don't know. But I have to say, we are only using that for this very first week for that prep objective, the computer adaptive part. After that, we are just strictly doing assignment by assignment. So here's the main menu in the upper left. Any notifications will show up there by the bell. This will prompt you to move along. And so again, when you first create your account, it's gonna ask you to do this tools tutorial. 
which is really just walking you through how to enter answers and use outlets. So type 14. Now suppose you wanted to, you know, clear that. You could click on the X. This is an undo button. Really handy, especially if you entered a, you know, a lot of stuff. Click next. So this is the fraction tool. Click two and then click in the box in the bottom. Click three. Next. All right. Click on the region button, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and skip this. So when you're done, you'll get that message. Congrats, you've completed. And then the next thing to do is the initial knowledge check which is actually problems in that prep objective. So you're going to start this. Stay focused. Don't get distracted. Don't get help from others. Have pencil and paper ready. Take your time. Do your best. Only click on I don't know if you really don't know how to solve a problem. Uh, problems that require a calculator will have a built-in Alex calculator for you to use, which is brilliant. Um, so you guys do not need to purchase the calculator. However, let me just say that, you know, several of you might actually want to use some of these, you know, statistical methods and things in your future, in your life. And so we will be exploring how to do stuff on graphing calculators um, and also using Excel. And you guys have uh, free access to Excel as students here. More on that. Also, our Math Success Center has free calculator loan programs. Um, there are also lots of, you know, free apps for calculators. So I'm very sensitive to all of the financial stuff because I was so poor as a student. Um, so I like to really point out all of these, you know, workarounds. All right, and then use the help if you need help entering. And then you start. Okay, so graph the line. There's Here's the tools help just to show you. So it, it will walk you through like how to plot a point, how to draw a line, etc. Okay. All right, so I'm going to skip the knowledge check. I'm going to pretend like I had little knowledge whatsoever. All right, even with little knowledge, it shows me that I have mastered 15 of the 20 topics. Okay. Um, notice the shaded part shows what I know, and the gray part shows what's left to be learned in the class. And then you can click continue. And this is our Alex homepage. This is the pie tab showing. So it shows this, you know, Alex pie. Again, you can click on a slice and it tells you, you know, for arithmetic and algebra, I've mastered 11 of the 14 topics with three to go. Click on this one, slopes and lines. Here's our timeline view. And this says, you know, right, I completed 15 of the 20 topics. So there are five topics left by Sunday. Okay. Um, and so again, the 20 topics that were in that initial knowledge check you know, those are now included and make up that prep objective, okay? So this is the week by week view, and then you're all set. You can start when you're ready to work on that prep objective. So again, by the end of this first week of class, And by Sunday at midnight, you guys all ought to have completed those 20 topics in Alex. Okay.
This is called your learning page. When you first start, you automatically land on this learning page, which gives you explanations, examples, all kinds of information. When you're ready, you can click on the start button. And this shows you how many correct answers you need in a row to complete and uh, learn this topic. So here there are five, but I'll tell you, if you literally get three in a row, it'll fill in all five for you. If you forget it and you want a refresher, you can click on explanation, okay? And it takes you back to a learning page. All right. I'm going to go back to the main menu, back to the home page. Okay. We're going to keep coming back here and, you know, I'm just going to remind you how all this works. But this is, you know, to kind of get you started. Notice we also have assignments in here. So this lists all your assignments. Notice here's the prep objective. Right. And it shows 15 out of 20 topics, or I have 75% so far completed. Right. And you can see the due dates in here for like homework and quiz chapter one, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So all of your homework and quizzes and practice exams are already open. So if anybody wants to work ahead, I know sometimes like, hey, you're planning a trip or you have an exam in another class and you want to work on something in this class early, you know, you can do that. So you can focus on an exam the following week or whatever. You can also do stuff late with a small late penalty. And I'll show you about that. Okay, and we're also going to be using the grade book here, oh, hold on. All right, so here is the grading policy. Um, Sorry, and thank you about for letting me know, Nathan. <laughs> I was saying goodbye. My husband stepped up. Um, I was saying the three main things you'll need in Alex, you know, the home assignments and the grade book. Those are probably the three main things you'll need. You do not need to do worksheets or anything. You can pull up a calendar if you want. But we already have the calendar on the syllabus, you know, so I'm just saying. Those are the only three things I ever use in here. Okay. Did I close? Yeah, I did. I, think I closed my window. Our house. And then the last link in the table here is links and resources. So again, I have LBCC resources and then other resources like calculator apps, free or low cost calculator apps, online emulator, 
some really good help websites, free graphing utility. Math is fun is going to be a fave for this class. Stat Trek is good too. Anyways. Okay, so those are the kind of most frequently used links. Notice there's also now a student resources link on the left. This is new, by the way. So it lists all the different student resources, which is fantastic. We also have a link to the Math Success Center. There is free math tutoring at the Math Success Center. I, I'm just, I'm always amazed by this. When I was a college student, there was no free tutoring. <laughs> if you wanted a tutor, you had to hire a private tutor. And, you know, I couldn't afford that. So I'm just saying, there is like, there's so much. The internet wasn't even, you know, around with any good kind of information back then. So to have all of those help websites and videos, it's just amazing. So um, free math stat tutoring, you know, walk up available or request an online appointment, et cetera, et cetera. They also have these tutorial workshops. You can sign up here. After hours, there is um, net tutor. Okay, it's free tutoring at any time. I'm just saying it's the bomb. And for um, for hours, I always tend to Google things like LBCC, Math Success Center, and here's the link. And you can see like the fall 2023 hours posted here. So Monday through Thursday, nine to seven, Friday they close early and Saturday, 11 to four. Okay, I know it's a lot of information. Um, I have got a link posted here about what is mathematics. I want to go through this real quick and share with you because in other you know, fields, like if you take an intro to biology class, like bio 101 or history, I mean, there's kind of an overview, right? You get an overview of the field. And in math, we typically don't do that. You take an algebra class, you just start learning algebra, geometry, you just start learning geometry. But what is math? What all does it encompass? If you're not a math major, you probably don't know. So I thought it would be good to share and have you guys see what us math people have, you know, gotten ourselves into. Um, definition, so this is the Merriam-Webster definition, science of numbers, um, interrelation, combinations, generalizations, abstractions of space configurations, and there's sort of blah, 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 right? Um, Wikipedia, math has no generally accepted definition. And that is so true, right? There are different schools of thought, especially in philosophy, that have put forth radically def different definitions, all of which are controversial. Like basically we cannot agree on a single definition. And by the way, you might be wondering like why philosophy? Um, oops. And let me say like, because I never really uh, knew this, you know, until, I don't know, a certain point in my college career or grad school. But, you know, people like me who have a PhD, that stands for Doctor of Philosophy, right? That's the philosophy, and D stands for the doctor. And it's because no matter what field you're in, when you start thinking more deeply and delving more deeply into that area, it becomes very philosophical. And you're, you're analyzing, you're using critical thinking skills. And so you become a doctor of philosophy in whatever area. So you can have your PhD in biology, in history, 
PhD in math, whatever. Okay. Um, math is about numbers, shapes, blah, blah, blah. Most rigorous mental discipline ever invented. I don't know about that. It's among the richest, most wide ranging and most useful. I would go with that. It's deeply interwoven into all of modern life. So I'm just trying to share with you some different definitions of math. Um, famous mathematician, Carl Gauss, he famously said that math is the queen and servant of the sciences. There's also controversy over whether or not math has been discovered or if it's man-made or human-made. I fall firmly into the um, human or man-made camp because I, I tend to think of math, you know, it's like, I, I mean, it's in a way it's all of these, you know, but we're really describing things. We're looking at very abstract things. So for example, um, I just drew three circles. Right, three is an idea. It's a human made idea to refer to that quantity. You know, it's a way of describing it. It's an abstraction. Just like, you know, these are three letters, but these look very different than these. And yet we can describe the quantity of the letters and the quantity of the circles as three. So to me, it's, you know, human-made. Anyways, all these controversial things. There's also this really cool timeline for the history of math. Um, that's hot in here. Notice 50,000 BCE, first evidence of counting. And in the right column, these were other things going on around the same thing. So that was when Neanderthal man was walking around. Okay. So, you know, you can just scroll around, you know, and, and do like comparison. Euclid's elements, you know, right around the time Aristotle died, uh, the Great Wall of China began right around the time that that was a huge, huge advent in geometry, right around the same time that the Great Wall of China began. So it's kind of interesting to see side by side, um, you know, some of the big um, milestones, if you will, in math and what else was going on around that time. You know, Galileo, Shakespeare, the same year, right? And the death of Michelangelo. So anyways, I think this is kind of cool. And if you're interested in history, you know, you might be interested in that. So again, this PowerPoint, it's uploaded on our canvas. And here's another one, but we'll just move along. I'm going to skip through this. This shows a little Venn diagram. You guys might be familiar with that. To just give you an idea of the relationship between pure math, applied math, computer science, statistics, et cetera, et cetera. Like most people um, in math, mathematicians or STEM people, you know, scientists, think of math as being largely these comprised of these two main branches. There's pure math and applied math. And pure math was really the dominant kind of only branch of math up until about World War II, when all of a sudden we really needed to focus on our national security and um, being more competitive as far as creating bombs and, you know, technology and engineering for planes and tanks and also cryptology. Um, to encrypt our communication and things like that. So all of that gave rise to us starting with a particular problem that we wanted to solve and developing the needed math to solve that problem. And that, my friends, is applied math. 
Um, interestingly, you know, so pure math, I would say, is kind of doing math for math's sake, the enjoyment, the discovery, the um, enlightenment, the, um, you know, critical thinking, all of that. It's like, well, you have some existing like theorems or body of works. And then you ask another question like, hey, what if this? And what if that? And then you prove new things and more things and more things. Um, and before you know it, you've discovered all sorts of new math. And, um, you know, that's kind of how pure math is born. And even though pure math has no specific problem as its goal, oftentimes the results of pure math do still end up solving a bunch of, you know, problems that we have. In fact, I would say more often the pure math route solves the problems than the applied math, interestingly. So um, that's kind of cool. And you can see how statistics kind of falls in there. Um, I'll just hand it to them. Yesterday was my birthday, by the way. So, um, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> All right. I much prefer pure math myself. I just think it's it's cool. And see, in that sense, it's kind of more like an art to me, right? When you do art, there's not like a problem, right? It's a very... Um, you know, man-made or human-made endeavor where you're trying to just explore and, um, you know, create something or express something. And um, that's that's what I kind of like. Anyway, um, UC Berkeley, their math department is often ranked in like the top five in the world. So I thought it would be cool to kind of show you what areas of research and have going on at Berkeley. Um, so the algebra research, analysis, you know, topology, et cetera. And look, they even have probability. So we're gonna be looking at probability in our class. Algebra, now you might be thinking kind of junior high school and high school algebra, but let me just tell you, that's an example of an algebra. And so algebra is a huge field in math. And um, yeah, so that's a primary research area. And just to give you an idea, like some of the names even of these courses, like undergraduate upper division. So upper division is junior and senior level classes. And so you can just see like Fourier analysis, analysis, ordinary differential equations, differential geometry, topology, um, graduate courses, Banach algebra, spectral theory, um, Oops, ring theory, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So I think it's just, you know, again, kind of cool to see what they have going on. Big math department there. Uh, there's 64 math disciplines. There's a math subject classification, right? And they have, there's a scheme. Uh, I thought that was the one that listed. Let's see. So here we go. The math subject classification system. So, you know, if an article is being published, we know like under like what topic heading, right? probability theory, algebraic topology, general topology, geometry, functional analysis, integral equations, K-theory, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So kind of cool also. So different ways of kind of understanding the field of mathematics. Um, it's interestingly, you know, back in 2017, at least less than 0.01% of all people in the U.S. are mathematicians. <laughs> so pretty funny. It's rare. 
uh, different career paths in math. If anybody's interested, I have actually, you know, um, inspired people to consider math as a major or a minor. And there are lots of cool things you can do. Um, becoming an actuary, that's usually ranked as like the number one best job to have. I mean, as far as just, you know, how happy somebody is, their like job flexibility, their job security, their, you know, safety, all of these kinds of things that different places rank. Um, oops, I didn't mean to, to close that. I guess that was the last one. But anyways, all these different areas too, computing, engineering, law, medicine, life science, et cetera. Okay, so just kind of a brief tour of math. I'm a very top-down person too, so I like seeing the big picture and then like where do we fit, right? So I wanted to share that with you. Uh, and then I'm gonna just finish going over this homepage communication plan, central meeting place here. And then I'm gonna be posting announcements. So again, make sure you're getting the announcements. The default is that they're emailed to you. So it'll come to the email that you have in the Viking student system. Make sure it's not going to your spam. Uh, note, we need a note taker in this class, okay? It's a great thing to do you get priority enrollment. That is such the bomb, right? <laughs> priority registration. Um, or you could get volunteer service hours. I used to always be a note taker, even back in the day when there was no incentive, I'm just saying. So um, please consider doing that. All right, we've already talked about the syllabus and schedule modules. We have 16 weeks this semester, and they correspond to 16 modules. If you click on the modules here, here they are. And so each week we have in these columns like learn, practice, interact. So learn, look, I've got lecture notes you can download. Um, I'm encouraging you to read the syllabus. Here's a handout on um, operations, right, et cetera, et cetera. Reminding you in Alex, complete the prep objective. And then we have an optional discussion. It gives you guys a place to interact with each other. And just for example, I'll pull up week four. So each week there's learn and practice, this one also has, you know, that practice exam. It's due by Sunday. And notice some of the, you know, info, homework and quizzes. Well, this particular week, they're due the following Sunday at midnight, unlimited tries at the homework two attempts on quizzes after the due date. They're still accepted with a late penalty of 5% up through December 10th, which is the day before the final exam. Right. And then the actual exam in Alex, you get three hours to do it and two attempts per problem. Okay. Also, one last thing, the very last module is on fractions, because I know a lot of people, that's for a lot of people, that is their departure point with math, you know, where they thought, I can't do math, I can't do it, right? I'm no good at fractions. I've heard that for years, and you really need fractions to do statistics. Um, so we can talk about stuff as it comes up. Also, I created this to really help you guys. And again, I want you to, you know, be like, hey, this is now my opportunity 
if I struggled with this before, this is your opportunity to fill in any gaps in your understanding and like once and for all to get this stuff down. Because I will tell you, I don't care what your career choice is. If you're sitting in a meeting and, you know, and again, I mean, I'm talking about like kind of a career where, where you're going to make a lot of money, right? Where you're going to be a professional or a leader or, you know, um, something, you know, that kind of warrants your college degree, right? And there is nothing wrong with other jobs where that's not the case. In fact, I, I had a job once where I was painting, one of my favorite jobs ever, right? So jobs in construction, there are all kinds of different jobs. And I'm not a person who believes that one job is better than another or that people are better who are like white collar versus blue collar or any of that other stuff. But I'm just saying, statistically, uh, people who have a college degree and have a kind of professional career, there is going to be some sort of analysis required. There will be some quantitative reasoning required. So if you're in a meeting and somebody is talking and using a fraction, if you're not following along, it's just not going to go over well, right? It, and I've been in the private sector and I know this from even experience, like, wow, so-and-so didn't even know what, like, you know, two-fifths meant there. Uh, we can't allow him or her to do, you know, become a project manager. I used to work in um, for a developer general contractor. And if a project manager didn't have, you know, a good sense of analysis, you couldn't allow that person to do that job. So, um, you know, I hope you will want to learn this for yourself to keep it with you. Right. Oftentimes that's different than, hey, this is going to be on the test. Dr. Ward wants me to learn this. Right. Fractions. Everybody needs to know fractions as an adult, I feel. Just to be in society and have conversations with people and stuff. So if that's been, you know, a weak spot, this is your time. The, especially this first week is pretty slow and easy. I totally recommend that you start going through whatever each one of you might need to fill in your gaps. Like, look, if you feel like, ah, I was pretty good with it, I just don't remember some stuff, there's a quick seven-minute review video. Um, if you really want to kind of start from scratch, like I would start with my PowerPoint and Khan Academy that has videos that really start from scratch. And you know, you've got a whole week. This class, it's recommended that you spend um, 15 to 20 hours per week in this class to be successful. And that doesn't mean like 10 hours Saturday, 10 hours Sunday, <laughs> right? Really a couple of hours every single day. So if you need to spend that time learning fractions, I am totally here to help you. Our Math Success Center can also help you, okay? So there are literally these, you know, intro videos, more about fractions, et cetera, et cetera. And, and again- So once again, this square right over here that I'm shading in red represents one eighth of the whole. Now let's look at a few more examples where I've shaded them in ahead of time. And what I want you to do right now is pause the video and either in your head or on a piece of paper, write down, if you consider this, this purple thing the whole, what fraction does this red part represent? If you consider this blue part the whole, what fraction does this red part represent? If you view this yellow triangle as a whole, what fraction does this red part represent? And so I encourage you to pause the video now. Right, so here you have a whole rectangle and it's been partitioned into three equally sized slices or pieces, and one of them is shaded. So that's one third. 
And here you have a circle that represents the whole. Probably ought to write things. It's been cut into five equally sized slices and one of them is shaded. So that's one fifth. Here, you know, we can't say that's one fourth because these are four different sized slices. Okay. So anyways, There are those videos. Math is Fun also has great explanations with fractions. Proper, improper, equivalent fractions, blah, 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 blah. How to convert percentages to fractions. Um, my PowerPoint, I've already downloaded it. You know, I start out really basic. And you can just see fraction is a number represented by, you know, two whole numbers, A over B. It means part to whole, division or ratio, et cetera, et cetera. The numerators on the top, the denominators on the bottom, the two equal parts, that's the denominator. And the numerator is what we're focused on. Here are four different ways to represent three-fourths. Something called a fraction strip. This strip has been cut into four equal size pieces and three of them are shaded. This is an area been cut into four equally sized areas and three of them are shaded out of the four. This is three fourths of the way to one. All right, this is the halfway mark. You cut half in half again and you get fourths. So that's one fourth, two fourths or a half, three fourths, four fourths or a whole. And then the set model, where you have four items in the set and three of them are shaded. Okay. Two out of the six are shaded. There's all kinds of stuff. Okay. I also have all these worksheets. adding and subtracting. And I just want to show you. So like if you needed some practice, and it reminds me like when I was in high school, I, I argued with one of my math teachers and I was like, you know, I don't want to have to do like 50 problems for homework every night and bring this thick book home every night. You know, can I just please do the problems that I need to do? Because I know which problems I need to do. And I made him a bet that, uh, I don't know why that one's not pulling up. The website's going slow. That if he picked like three problems and I could do them right on the spot, that I would be allowed to do it my way. And he took me up on the bet. I did the three problems. And then I didn't bring my book home every night. And I remember sometimes my dad asking me, you know, how come you don't have your math book? Or don't you have any homework? And I'm like, I did it in class or I don't need to do homework in this unit, you know, whatever. So I knew what I needed to do. Right. So we're all adults. We know whether or not we know how to add and subtract. Do you need more practice or not? Like we know that for ourselves. Right. It's really children who don't know that yet. Usually I would say by high school, you, know, you ought to know what you don't know and what you need to practice and when you need to ask questions and all of that. So, um, just want you to know that all of these worksheets have answer keys. So you can check your own work. Again, you could even bring these with you to the Math Success Center or to my office hours, student hours. You could text pictures and ask me questions like, hey, how did you do this? Whatever. Okay. So hopefully this will now be the semester where you never again have to say, I'm no good at fractions. You also probably have children in your life listening to you. 
And we don't want the next generation to grow up believing that it's okay to walk around saying, I'm no good at math, I'm no good at fractions, right? This is a very American problem that's very common where people do that. We see it like in movies all the time, right, on TV. Um, and it, it's really not okay. Nobody goes around saying, you know, I'm no, I'm no good at reading. I'm just no good at reading, right? That's not acceptable. Everyone needs to know how to read. It's also not acceptable to go around saying, I'm no good at math. Um, everybody can be good at math. It's not something we're born with, just like we're not born knowing how to read. Um, to be, you know, mathematically literate is something that we absolutely all can do. And we want our children to believe that too, right? One of the best kind of tests for whether or not something is a good thing to do is to think, if you had a child, would you want them to do that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And if you don't have your own children, like niece, nephew, friends, children, you know, whatever. Do you want to tell these children that they're no good at math? Or do you want them to believe that anything is possible? Because, you know, again, for people who believe they're no good at math, and if you think you can't do it, then you're not going to do very well. And then you're not going to go on probably to get one of those higher paying jobs that really require more of the analysis. So I see that all the time. So I really hope this will be that, you know, semester for you um, where, you know, things will change. Stay open-minded. All right, so it's four o'clock. Let's take a break and we'll come back at 4.15. We'll always try and take a break, like about halfway through, um, give or take. Okay, so I'm gonna pause. Okay. We are back. Hold on just a sec. We are recording, right? Okay, so I wanted to share a bit about me so you guys know a little bit about your professor. Um, and I had this to help guide me. <laughs> um, my childhood, I grew up primarily homeless and food insecure. And so again, this is why I'm just so sensitive to issues regarding you know, financial aid and money and equitable access and things like that. Um, you know, a lot of my view comes from past experience and I'm hoping for better for you guys, you know. Um, I basically traveled all around the country, um, lived in every state in the contiguous United States. So not Alaska, Hawaii, but every state except for uh, Washington state. And we primarily lived in like cheap hotels and motels. And not because we were a military family or any justifiable reason. <laughs> um, let's see. Getting private messages here, so sorry. Okay. Um. 
And so this is a brief glance at my, you know, pre-K through K school. Um, I didn't go to pre-K or kindergarten. I did two weeks of first grade in Maine, no second, third, or fourth grade, three months in fifth grade, no sixth grade, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the older I got, the the more school that was in there. Uh, but my junior year of high school, that was my first full year of school ever, which I mean, I was like amazed. And then I dropped out my senior year. I was very upset. Um, I had a full scholarship pending and, you know, my counselor said I probably would have gotten a full ride to college. And um, but I really, I had to drop out and get a job and take care of myself because my family was going to move again. And I just like, I couldn't take it anymore. Didn't take it anymore. So I, you know, I got a job in Vegas and then I eventually moved out here to Southern California and got my diploma. And, and then I also went to community college. So I feel like I'm with my peeps here. <laughs> um, community college was like the best thing ever for me. Just, you know, provides those stepping stones to getting your degree. And then I transferred to UCLA. I got my bachelor's in astrophysics. And then I got my master's in math from Cal State Fullerton. And I got my PhD in math education from Florida State. And then I taught at Long Beach State for 10 years. And I've been here 10 years. This is my favorite school ever, though. It really is. Best job ever. Um, and, you know, I really like to share a lot of this because I want you guys to know, like, if I can do it, you could do it. You know, uh, I wasn't born special or anything. I just worked hard and I kept at it. I just kept at it. Um, so, you know, pick something that you really love and follow your heart. That's my suggestion. Um, I know oftentimes, you know, we kind of go to school to get a degree so we can make money. And I mean, I know partly I did not want to stay in poverty. I wanted to have some, you know, quality of life. But at the same time, you know, like I started as a business major. And because um, I thought, you know, that would be like the best way for me to make money and stuff. But um, yeah, I ended up following my heart. And I'm glad I did. You know, every step of the way, it was like, yeah, I, you know, when I was, um, you know, studying astrophysics, I had to take so much math. I'm like, wow, I still love math, just like when I was a kid. And then I studied math. And during my master's, I started teaching. And then, you know, I'm like, I love teaching. This is like my way of giving back, you know. Um, so then I pursued math education. So, yeah. I really wish, you know, all that for you, that you can follow your heart and, you know, dream big and, you know, find success and, and happiness and also make money. Like, I feel like the money will come if you, you know, stay on like a true path. And um, it's a lot, you know, it's going to be hard just in the sense of, you know, everything is hard. You know, if you don't go to school, it's hard to make enough money to survive and you don't have job security and, you know, all of that. So I figure like life is going to be hard no matter what you do. So one way or another. Um, so at least, you know, be in an area that you enjoy. And um, yeah. And, you know, I believe too in trying to make a difference. So I hope, I hope all good things for you. And then I shared just some, some personal stuff. I mean, I am also married with kids and grandkids, but I, I try not to share personal pictures of other people. So these are, you know, pictures of me and our cat, Bruiser. He'll probably be appear making some appearances. Um, I love snowboarding. I've recently started paddleboarding. I do martial arts. Um, I love Halloween. So, you know, when I'm face to face, I'll be 
walking around campus dressed up as something. Tennis, I like all sports. I'm skateboarding. I'm vegan. That's like a huge, huge part of my self-identity. Um, so I have hence all the kind of animal pictures. And um, I'm Jewish. So here I am um, chanting the temple. And then just a couple of quotes to kind of share, but these really kind of encapsulate um, some important things for me in class. You know, I, I've been teaching over 25 years now, and I've just talked to so many students who have been shamed and, you know, they carry that with them. And especially in math. And so I just feel like, you know, this is your chance to shine, um, to heal that shame, to validate that what happened to you was wrong. If you had a teacher, you know, because I mean, I just know my teacher called on me, sent me up to the board, even though I didn't know how to do a problem. And, you know, it's like embarrassing. And especially in junior high school. Um, it's just terrible to be put into those kind of situations. And it lasts a lifetime, honestly, oftentimes. And so, you know, teachers who make students feel stupid and all of that, I mean, it can just really, really damage our self-esteem. And um, yeah, so I'm hoping, you know, if this resonates with any of you, I'm sure it does, that that this will now be a place where you can have a positive experience that you can overcome, you know, any of these past wrongs and, um, you know, move on to have a good life. I mean, this is like why I'm here teaching, you know? So, um, and then I hope, you know, that, that you will have the courage to just even take baby steps and like ask a question and see that like you won't be shamed. You know what I'm saying? That questions will be treated with respect. And um, I mean, questions are great. And it lets me know that you're engaged and you're interested and you care. And these are to me like all the important things, more important to me, honestly, than any course material. So, so yeah. Um, and the big, you can do this. I really mean that from my heart. So that's about me. And I want to put you guys into breakout groups. So you get a chance to meet, you know, someone else in class, a few people. If you want, you can, um, you know, exchange contact information. You don't have to. But if you wanted to, uh, you know, have a study group, if anybody wants to create a discord, let me know. You can, you know, share that with everybody, actually. Um, so I'm just trying to give you guys ways to have, you know, other student interaction. So let me do that. And so I'm going to put you guys in groups and just, you know, kind of introduce yourself, give either your name or a nickname if you're not comfortable with giving your name and maybe what's your major and career goals. What do you want to do when you grow up, right? <laughs> it always reminds me of my dad. My dad used to ask me that all, all the time. And then maybe um, share something boring about yourself. Because sometimes... There's so much pressure. Normally we're asked to share something interesting about ourselves, but something boring. Like how about, I don't know, I'm almost always wearing flip-flops. <laughs> um, even if I'm wearing a suit, I probably have flip-flops on. Uh, I have really strict ratio requirements for a PB&J if I eat a PB&J, like the ratio of peanut butter junk. I'm really fussy about that. So how's that for something boring? Okay, so your name, your major, and something boring. Okay, so I'm going to put you guys into groups for just a few minutes, and then we'll all come back. Okay, let me see.
So go ahead and uh, join your group. Let me see.
Okay, so I think everybody's back now. So hopefully that was good just to kind of meet some of your classmates. Uh, all right. Go back to sharing my screen. And. Hello. Hi. Did you have a question or? I was just wondering, I ended up in a breakout room and then I got kicked out of it again, if that's an issue. Oh, no, that's okay. I ended up closing them all. It should give like a 60 second warning though. It might be hard to notice that. But yeah. so I ended up bringing us all back now. Okay, okay. Thank you, Dr. Appreciate it. Sure, sure. Okay. So I want to go ahead and go into Alex and look at some of these problems. Um, we will discuss pretty much every single topic. Um, you know, I say pretty much. It, it's pretty rare when we don't have time to discuss one of them. Every single one has been covered in the videos, though. So, so that's a plus. Um, oh, no, wait. I want to do it this way. All right. So I want to look at these problems. And also, I just want to point out the lecture notes, right? I have them here, and sometimes I might write and add to them. But also, just as a reminder, they're uploaded at the weekly modules. So, you know, you might want to either print them or if you want to keep them on your screen and follow along, whatever you might want to do. But here, right, if you click the arrow, it downloads. But notice this is the same exact thing that's uploaded as I have here. Okay. So just reminding you of the lecture notes in the modules. Okay. So we start, you know, pretty slow. So again, this is a great time to focus on any gaps, especially with fractions or anything else that especially comes up this first week in the prep objective. Um, give the digits in the tenths place and the tenths place. So remember our place value chart, you have a ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, 10,000s, et cetera, et cetera, to the left of the decimal. And then to the right of the decimal, these are fractions, right? You have tenths, hundredths, thousandths, right? So a tenth, that means if you had a whole, I'm gonna try to draw here. If you had a whole and it was cut into 10, Sorry, it's not even close to being. Um, equally sized. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so I have 10 roughly equally sized, you know, slices. Then one tenth. Is one of those, right? So this. For example, it's two tenths, so there are two of those. And then three hundredths, right? So a hundredth is a thing. If you had a whole, it was cut into a hundred equally uh, sized pieces. Three hundredths, like a penny, right? You have a dollar, one whole dollar, cut into 100 equally sized or value right? A penny has 
um, the same value as any other penny. So three pennies and then four thousandths. Okay. And then all of these place values can be written using decimals. It's a base 10 number system that we have. Our numerical system, our numeration system is a base 10 system because each place value, like the ones place, the tens place, right? Each place has a value. And each one of those place values can be written with an exponent with a base of 10. Okay, so like 10 squared, that means 10 times 10, two times, right? 10 to the fifth, that means 10 times itself, five times. So the exponent tells you how many times you're multiplying the base times itself. Right, and then the tenths place, we can write that using a negative exponent. And a negative exponent means to move the base to the opposite location and then make the exponent positive. You know, we never tend to write an exponent of one. You now in the end, you wouldn't write an exponent of one. This is the hundredths place. That's one one hundredth. Okay. As a decimal, it's point zero one. As a fraction, it's one one hundredth. Okay, so this Alex question is asking to give the digits in the tens place. So there are two tens. And then the tenths place, there are three tenths. Two tens and three tenths. And I also like to show the Alex explanation. So if you forget and you go back and look at your explanation page, it'll hopefully look familiar, you know? There are two tens, one one, three tenths, four hundredths. Let's see, there's okay, how about the tens place and the hundredths? So there are eight tens and there are nine hundredths. Okay. Next top topic is on rounding decimals. Round to the nearest tenth. So when you round, and I have this on the lecture notes too, you know, you in practice we learn to write like a vertical line to the right of the place we're rounding to. Like here we're rounding to the nearest ten. So the five is in the tens place, put in line. And then if the next digit is five or more, you round up. Because, you know, 57, it's closer to 60 than it is to 50. So we're rounding it up to 60. Right? If you're smack dab in the middle, you're not closer to either one. But you have to have some convention. So we say if it's five or more, you know, you round up. So 55 would also be rounded to 60. Okay, so here, the nearest tenth, there are six tenths and eight meets the five or greater. So you're going to round that to 33.7. You're going to round it up. This also tells you if it's less than five, we round down. If it's five or greater, we round the six up. It's greater than five, so we round it. 
to the nearest tenth. So again, we're looking at that seven, and then the eight is greater, so you're gonna round that to 16.8. Okay, so that's rounding. Using a calculator to convert a fraction to a rounded decimal. Okay, so it says to use a calculator. So notice the Alex calculator appears. 35, the fraction bar means divided by. So I'm gonna hit 35 and divided by. And notice it writes the fraction bar and kicks me to the denominator downstairs. And then press equals. And then it's asking you to round to the nearest hundredth. So the hundredth is where that five is. The next digit is eight. So you're gonna round it up to 2.06, okay? Five thirteenths, so five divided by 13. And then again, to the nearest hundredth. The eight is in the hundredths place. The next digit is a four, so we don't round it up. It's just 0 0.38, 0 0.38, okay? So again, we're gonna go through all these. I'm just gonna stop here for now. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Um, otherwise, I'll see you guys on Wednesday, okay? I hope you enjoy the rest of your first day of the fall semester. Welcome back.